Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine the center as well as the radius of a circle. So what we have is we have four equations up here and I also gave you the general form of the equation of a circle. And that equation is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where the center is the coordinate points h comma k and the radius is the value of r. So you can see I have h and k here are being subtracted from our x and y variables, which represent any point on the circle. And then I have equal to r squared. So r is just your radius, not r squared. Very quick point. A lot of people get stuck here. So in this case, I have x squared plus y squared equals 9. You can see there's no h or k. There's nothing subtracting from them, right? Well, in reality, they are there, but they're just represented as zeros. So a lot of times students you know, have a little trouble with this. So sometimes I'll write them in there. Okay, so you can see that this is going to be um, x minus 0 um, plus y minus 0. And because really what's x minus 0 is just x, right? And then that's x squared. So therefore, in this case, I can say the center is equal to 0 comma 0. And then what I also did is I noticed that 9 was a square number. So I just rewrote it as a number squared. You can see that you know, if we have the number 9 equals r squared, well, in reality, 3 squared equals r squared. So therefore, r has to equal 3. So I can say the radius is equal to r. Now in the next example, you can see I have x squared plus y squared equals 10. Again, you notice that, oh, there's no h or k, so we know the center is going to be 0, 0. However, 10 is not a square number. So I can't do just as simple as what I did there, because there is no number squared um, that, you can, that you can square to equal to 10. So what I'm going to do is now write an equation. I'm going to say that r squared is equal to 10. And you could have done the exact same thing, actually, I did over there. And you could have taken the square root of both sides. But in this case, I just decided to rewrite it. But in this case, um, I can't rewrite 10 as a number squared. So what I'm going to have to do is use my inverse operations. So to undo taking the square, square, um, square I'm going to take the square root. And then r equals, if you remember when you introduce the square root, we always include plus or minus. However, when you look at this, is it possible for the radius to be negative? No. Radius is a length, right? It's, it's always going to be positive. So therefore, we're only going to include the positive root. So I can say the radius is equal to the square root of 10. All right, in the next example, I have 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 2 times y plus 1 squared equals 32. Now, in this case, you can see that I have some numbers in front of my x and my y's, where in the general equation, I didn't have any of those numbers, right? So to do that, what we need to do is get rid of these two numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. Well, again, just like kind of the distributive property, this 2 divides into this um, expression, and the 2 divides into that expression. So therefore, the 2's all divide out. And I'm left with x minus 3 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 16. Um, now, this one gets a lot of students. And usually, we can fix this by looking at the formula again. <clears throat> Remember, the formula is really, for the general equation of a circle, is x minus, I'm going to put it in parentheses x minus positive h plus y minus positive h squared equals r squared. So in reality, if you wanted to look at this problem, we could really put parentheses around this negative 3, right? And the h one here, this is, this is going to be rewritten here again in just a second. So what I want you to understand is here's the general form. What I did is I just put parentheses around the h. But if you notice here, these values are both the same. We can say that h is equal to 3. Now this one, how do you rewrite an addition problem as a subtraction problem? Well, what I can do is write this as y minus a negative 1. Because if you look at that, is y minus a negative 1 the same thing as y plus 1? Yes. But now look at the equations. It's yy minus minus hh. h is equal to negative 1. So now um, my equation on my center is going to be 3 comma negative 1, not negative 3 positive 1, which is a big mistake a lot of students make. So my center 
is 3 comma negative 1. Now to find the radius, we notice that r squared is equal to 16. I could do it like this, or I could do it like that. I'll do it this way, so I'll say r squared is equal to 16. Solve for r squared, I'll take the square root of both sides. And I can say r is equal to 4. So I can say my radius is equal to 4. OK, now in the next example, I'm just going to kind of do the exact same thing here again. Uh, just realize, again, it's basically the way that kind of, I mean, this is a way that I make sense of it. But a lot of students, once they you know, are even having a hard time making sense of it or just want to kind of like a quick way to remember it, is it's always the opposite. So if it's y minus 1, that means the y coordinate is 1. If it's x plus 2, that means the x coordinate is negative 2. Now, the other trick that I did on this is I swapped the x's and the h's, right? The y is now in front of the x. If you look at the equation, it doesn't really matter. Since we're adding, it doesn't matter which of these is first. Just remember that h always goes with the x, and k always goes with the y. So you could rewrite this if you wanted to. It's not going to change the problem in any way. A lot of students just like to do that because it looks exactly the same. So that's perfectly fine. But it's addition. 5 plus 4 is the same as 4 plus 5. It doesn't matter. Just remember that h always goes with the x. And k always goes with the y. And remember, they're like the opposite because of the way I explained it over here. Now, the next one we have is our radius. So we can say r squared is equal to 60. We have an issue. Um, again, we do not have a square number. So I'm going to take the square root. And you can see that I have r is equal to the square root. Again, the positive square root, because what I explained over there, we don't need to worry about the negative. The positive square root is 60. Um, again, we have an issue. Because if you look at this, um, 60, 16, yeah. If you look at this, um, you can't take the square root of 60. However, we can simplify this. And what we need to do is determine the largest square number that evenly divides into 60. So we just start listing square numbers. Um, let's see, I have 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, and 64. Well, obviously, 64 is too large. 49 does not evenly divide into 60. 36 does not evenly divide into 60. 25 does not evenly divide into 60. And we look at 16, and guess what? 60 does. So we write this as r times the square root of 16 times 5. No. That's 50. That does not work. 16 does not go in there. <laughs> I think I was thinking, what was I thinking? I was thinking 80. Yeah, all right. So 16 doesn't work. Then we look at 9. Well, 9 goes into 63, so it doesn't work there. And then we say 4. Uh, 4 does go into there. How many times? Uh, that's what I was thinking, 15. 4 goes into there 15 times. Now, I can take the square root of 4, but I cannot take the square root of 15. So the square root of 4, so I can break this up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 15. So the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 15. So we can say the radius is equal to square root of 60, or you could say in simplified format, 2 square root of 15. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine the center as well as the radius of a circle. Thanks. Hello.